Mm. But they can mm. send to their representative. Mm. All right. To keep Abuja and other parts of Nigeria safer, all hands must be on deck. As such, the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, has held a crucial meeting with the force management team and commanders of police tactical squad. The meeting was convened to map out strategies to check activities of bandits terrorizing various parts of the country. Also, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has vowed not to rest until his government stamps out terrorism, banditry, and every kidnapping and every agent of darkness is crushed. Gentlemen, soundbite, 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 soundbite from the Inspector General of Police and the, the Commander in Chief himself, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. But we, we've been grappling with this in the last eight years, and uh, we thought during the election, we thought it came down, and uh, now we now have insecurity across the country, and it's moving dangerously close to the seat of power. It's not moving dangerously to the seat of power. It is within the seat of power. It's in Abuja. And uh, you remember vividly, some months back, the governor of Niger State raised an alarm. Governor Bago? Yes. He raised an alarm. He said that the bandits... Terrorists, kidnappers have practically taken over Niger State. And they are almost circling Abuja. He said it. <laughs> From Suleja to uh, Zuba, um, which is uh, 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 Abuja. How many kilometers? Very few kilometers. So it is practical. They have been in Niger State and have been, even within Niger State, um, Abuja is practically surrounded by Niger, um, um, Nasarawa, and Kogi State. Those are the major, and these guys have been within the, and the question you ask yourself, when this alarm was raised, what did our security agents do? It still goes back to what we are saying. What did they do? Did they follow up on what that alarm that was raised by the governor of Niger State? Now they have entered the city. The most annoying part is that we don't know the social, economic and political problem that this level of insecurity is bringing to the seat of power. One, Abuja is our capital. That is our political head. That is where you have all the embassies. Now, the president has been going around on a daily basis, flying across countries, trying to seek foreigners to come and invest in Nigeria. The vice president currently is in Davos. Switzerland, begging foreigners to come and invest in Nigeria. But with the kind of news coming out, who will want to come and invest in a place where there is a high level of insecurity? So this is a big challenge, and I believe that the security agents should be able to do it. And let us put this. This is squarely on the footstep of the Nigerian police. We shouldn't miss this up. The Nigerian police, by the... Uh, uh, by the 1999 Constitution, um, 99, uh, um, yes, uh, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, gave the power for internal security to the police. The armed forces, the army, the um, air force, the navy, uh, their own primary responsibility is to guide against et external aggression. So, being that be as the case, now this issue has come up. Good enough. The IG, um, I saw this, uh, this afternoon, I saw that there was a, a press uh, um, conference that I had. I saw them moving out a lot of equipment and the rest of them ready to go into this. But this has been happening. You forgot it. I hope you've not forgotten the Kaduna, Kaduna, Abuja, Kaduna. That embarrassment. That, the embarrassment that that area has been causing. So it is a big challenge. And I hope that. So they're back now. Yes. I hope that the challenge, unlike what happened during the uh, Buhari, we had the president gave a standing order to an IGP to go into Benue State. He, didn't, he refused. The IG didn't go. And the president was not aware. Mm. Until one day he now asked, he said, ah, my friend, I think I remember that I asked you to go to. Yeah. But they have to know <laughs> that there is a new chef in the Sado. Ebola Ahmed Tinubu is not like Buhari. He's a man that wants things to be done. And he has said time and time, okay, if you don't get your job done, you will go. And that is it. But this issue of it, look at the young children being, kidnapped, being killed. Look at the ones, five, a family of five. Mm. Five lead girls. One of them was, was killed. 
It was uh, not even there was one before that. One was killed because the parents could not pay. They are another 13 year old. But let me find. Let me drop on this. There is something that is also happening that we have to be very careful of: the issue of crowdfunding. If you understand what I mean, a former minister came out recently to say, "Ah, his friend has been able to raise 50 million to be able to help." Her. Such issues shouldn't be on public domain. Those are not things that we put on national newspaper or put on television and the rest of them. It has to do with security. Now, because of those things, some of the bandits have now raised their anti from a Niger day to 700 million. Okay, let's take this breather. We'll be right back after this time out. So, there is a small problem. Despite all the entertaining ads we've created for you, some of you still haven't tried our services. Come on. First of all, we are a licensed microfinance bank. Sorry about that. For instance, you can open a business account with us and get our POS with it. It's good for your business. 99.99% reliable. I love it. <laughs> our card is the work. My money no the hang. You can open a business or personal account with us in minutes. I in the booty now. Our customer care is available. Abby? So, when it comes to reliability, security, convenience, and speed, you only need one bank. Join millions of happy customers. Download the Money Point app or find an agent near you to get started. This ad is a Money Point ad. Don't forget that. Money Point! Thank you for staying with us. If you are just joining us, this is Johnny the Standout on TVC News. Now, when you look at the situation, the Federal Capital Territory hosting foreign nations, hosting a lot of you know foreign investors and everything, it's not something that the next thing now, if the United States want to issue their travel advisory. <laughs> I, I don't imagine that Abuja will be there. Mm. And if Abuja is there now, that means it's a big problem. It's a, it's a big problem that we are facing. And um, we are impressed that the IG is summoning uh, policemen, you know, tax force and all that. You know, very good. But what is important? It, what, what we want to see results. Results. You have read about results. anytime something happens like this, in the IG with someone high command. You Sometimes know, the IG itself will relocate, yes, to, that state, relocate to that place. The initial grab Those grab things have become it. photo opportunism. Mm. Have become, people are tired. We want to see the thoughts. Because this thing has been happening since 2009. And it's getting worse by the day. You know? So when we are talking about people having a strong gold in River Niger, that is a very dangerous thing. No, River Niger crisscrosses nine states. And some of these states are redoed with terrorist organizations. You know, Mali, Niger, Chad, Burkina Faso, from a source in Guinea. River Niger that flows into Niger State. That river is enough for them to use small vessels to bring in whatever they want to bring into the country. And you know, the tributaries of River Niger goes to Niger Delta. So it means that if they have strong gold in, on River Niger, they could actually threaten our oil uh, capability. So, Niger, River Niger is very close to, you know, Abuja. We are having major crisis of terrorism in Kaduna. We are having in Niger, we are having in Benue, all the frontier states around Abuja, the federal capital territory. So, it's cause for concern. But at the same time, I know that this is an inherited problem. The government has just spent a few months, six months, or thereabout. So, they need time. But they must also know the Nigerians are, they are desperate, you know, to see fundamental changes. They are concerned about the fact that they cannot, they are, when their children go to school, they can't go to sleep. They cannot rest. They are anxious to see whether it's going to come back or not. I know this thing is, is shrinking Nigeria. It's, many Nigerians are going back to their communities. It's creating, it's fra, you know, a fractured state. When your children graduate from school, you know, you, you don't want them to go and serve in the north. You don't want, if he graduates in the north, you don't want him to go to the south. When you are sending your children to secondary school, you want them to be to go to the next primary school, the next secondary school that is in your neighbor. 
the university, the next one in your neighbor. People don't want to interact any longer. And it's going to affect, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, um, the kind of unity that we actually need for the country to see itself. And some people are shrinking to their local communities. Just, people, yeah, people don't want I don't, to, I don't know. they don't want to work elsewhere. Have, Coppers don't want to go out of their ter territory. So, you know, so the, the yeah. concept of having a Nigeria where people have confidence in each other, learn about each other's culture, it's been, you know, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's been eroded. So it's, it's a very dangerous thing that you see a family of just go to people's homes, not even highway. Now, they go to went to their homes and yes. they took them there. In the estates in Abuja. These are very cruel people, and we must realize that terrorism is motivated by three factors: economic, criminal, and political. The political angle is there. So the government needs to look at these three layers. So at the end of the day. We don't allow it to get out of it. It was building up for several years, and we just believe that you know everything is normal. Now it's getting out of hand. What kind of audacity is that? That they're not on the highway, they won't wait for you on the highway. They are not going into estates, going into um, uh, you know accommodations and to pick people. Yes, uh, several estates. They have been watching you for weeks. They would have... Several estates um, in Abuja is not safe now. Estates used to be some of the safest within the communities in the past. But now they go to estates, um, um, they kidnap people, they pick them. They don't just pick one person, then now they pick entire family. That is the mm -hmm. most annoying part of it. They pick an entire family and now start asking for But there is something also we have to also look at. What level of intelligence sharing do our security agents also do? Mm -hmm. Very key is the police sharing intelligence with NIA. Are they sharing intelligence? Uh, is DSS sharing intelligence with Nigerian Army? Is Nigerian Army sharing with the uh, Navy? I was at one of the, um, I think the last uh, Army uh, engagement in, uh, in Ibadan, where I was one of those that was invited by the Chief of Army Staff, and I attended. One fundamental thing that I noticed at that conference is that all the three um, the Chief of Staff, they are classmates. I think that's the first time we're having that. Their class, all of them are saying, in fact, very, very close. That the chief of army staff, uh, uh, Lieutenant General Lagoya, said that this is going to be one of the best level of chief of staff we are going to have. Mm -hmm. Unlike what we were having before, you know, there was a time that uh, uh, the NSA, one of the NSA came out that the greatest problem is having is that the service chiefs are not even cooperating within themselves. So the intelligence sharing to go a long way. Most often than not in this country, what we do is we react rather than prevent. That has always been our challenge. In most other countries of the world, let's, let me give you a, 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 a classical example. A few days ago, somebody rammed in Israel. Somebody rammed, some guys rammed a vehicle into a crowd in, the, in, in Israel. Why? Anyway, within two hours, all of them were picked up. In the U.S., you see people, it's not that we don't have insecurity in some, some of these countries. Of course, we've seen that we are starting individuals who carry guns, go to school, keep people. But you can be rest assured that within the next 48 hours, they will be caught. Mm. They will feed them out. What has happened to all the ones within the court? When last did you see anybody in court? And taking it further, most of the Boko Haram people that were arrested, that the government told that they were going to prosecute, mm. how many of them have been prosecuted? Because when you don't make example of people, mm. then it becomes a problem. The security people, some of them are going with that. Some of these people that are in the list. You've forgotten? You're forgetting that? In Dubai, some Nigeria, some people were, were called up. Yes, for financing Kill. terrorism. They were prosecuted, and within two days, three days, they were jailed. How come that we are not doing the same here? Rather, what we are doing, amnesty, amnesty. It will never solve the problem. All right. Gentlemen, I want to thank you. Thank Wally you. Adui. Thank you for your contribution. And um, Chief Chris Kendewando, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for having me. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11 p.m. Join us this Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. for Journalist Hangout on Sunday on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Ayodili Uzubaku. Bye for now. See you tomorrow.